And so if you've got your Bibles, open up, open up with me to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 25. Um, so I started praying yesterday for my sermon for tonight, and uh, man, I felt like, like God was moving in here. Like I was praying, I had my AirPod in, and I was just kind of walking around praying, and I just felt like God's spirit was strong. And I sat down and started to try and work on my sermon for tonight, and I was like, man, God's presence is real, this is going to be great, this is just going to flow. And I felt like I hit 15 brick walls, went to the hospital a couple times, and still didn't walk away with anything. And so uh, this morning I woke up, y'all ever woke up and you're just like tired? Yes. Right? Like yesterday morning, I woke up at five o'clock, an hour before my alarm was set to go off, and I was just, I was ready to go. I woke up, I'm like, man, the Lord woke me up, I'm good to go. And I got up and I spent time with the Lord. I read my Bible. I was, it was like a great morning. I spoke at uh, Panthers for Christ, which was incredible. And, and so I was just good. And then this morning I woke up, my alarm went off at six o'clock and I said, nope. And I hit snooze three times. And I don't ever hit snooze anymore. Like snooze is not in my vocabulary anymore, but I hit snooze three times and turned my alarm clock off and slept till 7 o'clock. And I had to be at work at 8 o'clock. So I was like, woo, pushing things close. But I was tired. I was dragging. Made my coffee. I, lay, I sat down on the couch. We were cuddled up next to me. Threw the blanket over him. I was like, yeah, this is going to be a good morning. Didn't even reach for my coffee yet. JoJo comes running out. Comes cuddle with me. And as soon as she cuddled, she went, I want my slime. Because we bought slime last night at Walmart. And I went, I don't want to go get slime. I want to sit here on the couch and drink my coffee. No, I want slime. I want slime, Daddy. I want slime now. You said that last night. I have it in the morning. I want slime now. So I had to get up and go get slime. And open it up and play with it. And then I was getting ready in the shower. And uh, the, the fleshly tiredness of me was just like, I don't even want to do anything. I don't want to move my arms. I don't want to wash my body. I just I don't want to wash my hair. I just want to stand here and go to sleep. But I began to pray in the shower despite my feelings of being tired. And uh, all of a sudden while I was praying, the Lord dropped a scripture in my heart. And uh, so I, as soon as I got to the office, after I got ready, I went, I got straight here. And I closed my door in my office, turned on some music, and I went to write it because I knew exactly what I was supposed to write. And uh, I said, that was a really long story <laughs> just to get to the fact that uh, we're coming out of Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 28. It says this. One day, an expert of the religious law stood up to test Jesus. Man, that is a bad idea. Y'all ever tried to test Jesus? It never works out too good in your favor. I'll just be honest. Uh, he tried to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? To which Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say and how do you read it? And the man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. You can also find a, a similar story to this in Matthew. But it, where it says that Jesus responds. The two greatest commandments are these two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. So point number one tonight. I've only got two points. But point number one tonight is love the Lord your God. Hallelujah. That's a good one, right? Yeah. That should just come automatic to us. We should just automatically love him. But I want to point out a couple things here. And it's, it says this, love the Lord your God. It could have just said love your God. But he said love the Lord your God. Why? Because a Lord is this. Someone or something that has power, authority, or influence. A master or a ruler. Right? And so when it says 
the love the Lord your God, what that is saying is, Lord, you, God, Jehovah, Jesus, King, Master, have power and authority and influence in my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. Right? Where they get this, because he says, what does the law of Moses say? Where this comes from is in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And uh, verse 4 through 9, and this is what it says. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as a reminder. Write them on your doorposts of your house and on your gates. Pastor Thomas, why'd you read all that scripture? What does I have to do with love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Let me tell you right here what it has to do with that. Because if we just read, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, we're missing a key component here because it goes on to say, and this is, this is the Lord talking. He says, commit yourselves wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly mean all of your heart. Not part of your heart. Not just a little bit. Not 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
Make sure you're seeing the commandments of God again. Hide these. Put these in front of you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 27 in the message translation, which is the scripture we've been reading anyway. It says this. He said that you love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and muscle and intelligence. And that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. Your heart. Your heart is the very beating part of your life. It is everything flows. The very life of who you are flows from your heart. That represents your passion. You need to have a passion for Jesus. Yeah. You need to give Jesus all of your heart. Everything you do, every bit of life that comes out of your body needs to be pumping through Jesus because he's got all of your heart. He has all of your passion, your, your prayer, it says, that represents your soul, right? How many of you have ever prayed and it just, you knew it came from your soul, right? Uh, and then your soul is praying and is seeking after God every moment of every day, everywhere you go. When you wake up, when you lie down, when you leave the house, when you come back and you're in your house, everywhere you go, your soul is crying out to God in prayer. The Bible says to pray always. Uh, another verse says pray without ceasing, meaning never stop. Well, our prayer constantly in communion with God, your muscles or your strength. All right, how many of y'all got muscles? Y'all want to show me your muscles? All right, I used to like to pretend like I had some muscles. But I ain't got no muscles. It's all for show. They're soft. They don't work out. I need to go to Life Fitness. Yeah. Right? Sam's been telling me I need to go. I just need to go, I guess. That's a good advertisement for Life Fitness. Sam would have, like, if he was in here, he would have been like, yeah! All right? But what your muscles represent is your work, right? How many of you, you may not work physically, but you work at school, right? You're doing school work, home work, right? Everything you do. So, but listen to me, listen, this is important because I believe that we do everything with excellence. Yeah. Right? When we were cleaning, when we were serving the church last week, I, I told most of you, like, listen, we do this with excellence. We do this as if we're doing it unto the Lord because this is his house. But I'm here to tell you that if you are serving God, the Lord your God, with all your heart, soul, and strength, with all of your muscle, that is the work that you do. And that means everything you do brings glory to God, which means you're doing everything with excellence. That means you're putting your very best effort into your homework. Some of y'all hate me right now, I know. That means you do the very best at school. That means you're not trying to sleep. That means you're not trying to, to doodle. That means you're not trying to cheat. Amen. That means when your mom asks you to clean your room, that is you putting in some work in your house, you clean your room. When your mom asks you to clean the bathroom, you clean the bathroom. When your mom or dad asks you to take out the trash, suck it up, buttercup, and take out the trash. And do it with excellence. Don't just tie up the bag, forget the banana peel on the floor, and keep moving. Go around to every other trash can in the house and gather them all up, and then put them in the trash bag, and then take it out and say, Mama, I took out the trash. You do everything with all your strength, and that is worship. That is showing God that you love him by living your life with excellence and love and dedication towards him. And the last thing is your mind, your intelligence, right? Hey, Bentley, let's come sit down, buddy. Let's go sit down, okay? I'm almost done. With all of your mind, with all of your intelligence, some of y'all are smart. Some of y'all are real smart. I'm looking at a bunch of Smarties. Ooh, now I want some Smarties candies. That's what some of y'all are, some Smarties candies. No, I'm a Kit Kat. You're a Kit Kat. That's what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. We do everything with excellence. And to love the Lord your God with all your mind means your thoughts. Right? I know Seth preached a couple weeks about mental warfare. And the thought and their thought life. Listen, you you have to do everything in your mind should bring glory to God. You should be seeking after God in your mind. It, it shouldn't just be. Listen, hear me out for a second. 
and all of your work can be seen by other people. Right? Writing all the commands and following all the commands here and there can be seen by other people. But one thing, there's two places that nobody can see, and that's your heart inside your heart and inside your mind. But your mind needs to be pure. The Bible says to think on things that are pure. To focus on things that are pure. There should be a purity to your mind because you've given all of your mind to the Lord. You have given it all to Him. He is Lord of your mind. He is Lord of your heart. He is Lord of your work. And He is Lord of your prayers. And when He has all of that, that is the greatest commandment. And then Jesus also says that there's one just like it. And that's point number two, and that's love your neighbor. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18 says this, and this is where this scripture is found. It says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against the fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Love your neighbor as yourself. Don't seek revenge, don't bear a grudge, but love them. I know some of y'all are like, man, you only knew what they did. But here's the thing, Leviticus chapter 19, full of all kinds of instructions. This is a call to holy living. If you read Leviticus 19, it is a call to holy living. It's full of instructions from the Lord. Do they all apply today? No, not all of them. Let me just read just a couple of them. Verse 5 says, talk about, take, uh, talks about taking a peace offering and when to eat it. Does that apply today? No, it doesn't. We don't do offerings like that. We don't, we don't have to lay down something and eat it within so many days. That doesn't really apply to us right now. Verse 9 talks about harvesting crops and leaving some for the poor. Any of y'all farmers? I didn't think so. so yeah, you kind of are. But something we don't practice today is it said leave the edges of the field and the extras that fall because for the poor and the foreigners to eat so they have something to eat or sell. Verse 13 talks about paying the worker that day. Like, they're worth their wages, don't wait the next day, but pay them that day. Well, we don't practice that in America because we pay like a week or two weeks later, right? Um, so that, that kind of doesn't really apply to today. Verse 27, which this is one of those that I really do wish applied today. I'm going to claim this one right here. Uh, do not trim your beard. Yes. Some of y'all shave? The Bible says do not trim your beard or the hair on your temples. Y'all ever seen Jewish people when they got the really long sideburns? Uh, y'all have never seen that? That's part of the law, right? The last one, verse 28, says, do not mark your bodies with tattoos. Yeah. Do not mark your body, came in with a pen in or whatever you do in the school, right? Don't mark your body. That doesn't necessarily apply today, right? It was a, more of a cultural thing. But this is what I do believe, that all of these scriptures can still apply to our lives in some ways. And they may still have a, some kind of a meaning, a meaning for today, right? But there are plenty of scriptures in chapter 19 that we still can apply. Verse 3 says, respect your mother and father. Mmm, some of y'all better respect them. Yeah. And it says this, observe a Sabbath day of rest. That means take a day and focus on the Lord and rest. Don't be working. Don't be doing a whole lot of stuff. That, that spoke to me right there. Verse 4, don't put your trust in idols. Verse 11, don't steal or cheat someone. Verse 12, don't bring shame on the Lord's name by using it to swear falsely. Yes, yeah, some of y'all right there. Verse 15, judge people fairly. Verse 16, don't gossip and slander. Verse 17, don't, don't nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives, but confront people directly so that you will not be held guilty for their sin. Verse 26, don't practice fortune telling or witchcraft. 
Listen, I'm just going to throw this out there. Halloween is coming up. And this is for some reason, it just happens to be the time when people like to play with Ouija boards. I don't know why, but I'm telling you that it's playing with witchcraft yeah. and fortune telling. Don't do it. Verse 29, don't defile your daughter as a prostitute. That's, that should apply today because let me just tell you, uh, Jojo, is ne that's not going to apply to her. Ever. Uh, it, basically what it says is don't, don't give your daughter over as a prostitute. That should apply today, right? All you girls should agree with that. Like, yeah, that verse should apply today. I don't, I don't want to be there. I don't want my dad to put me there, right? Uh, that was a little weird. I'm sorry. Verse 30. Again, keep the Sabbath. Man, again, in the same chapter, the Lord says keep the Sabbath twice. And then he says this, show reverence for the sanctuary. That means um, showing respect to God's house, Right? to the sanctuary of the church, this room. Verse 32 is not something that is practiced anymore, but people used to stand up in the presence of elders. When an older person would walk in the room, people would stand. Young people would stand. Um, they would show them respect, right? That's what it also says in that verse, is show them respect. So that means your elders, you should show them respect. I know you may not always want to, but it is... A command by God. The question then comes in Luke chapter 10, verse 29 through 37. Uh, as we continue right after that, the man trying to justify his actions, he asks Jesus and says this, Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus replies with this story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, they beat him up and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along and when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. And when he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him, the next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits, Jesus asked. And the man replied, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. Now, there's all kinds of symbolism, and I could probably preach this scripture 15 times to 15 different ways. Uh, but the thing that I want to point out to here is that there were two that passed by this man who was beaten and laying down by the road. Uh, one was the priest, you know, would represent kind of like a pastor or, or somebody like that, so a leader in the church, just kind of passed him by. Why? Because he didn't want to be defiled by uh, his beat up and bruised body because he'd have to go through all kinds of purification things. And so he's like, nope, I don't have time for that. The next would have been a temple assistant. That would have been probably somebody that goes to church, somebody that serves in the church a little bit. Uh, they just passed him by. But this hated man, this Samaritan, is the one who stops and heals all of this man's wounds. He's beaten, he's broken, he's stripped, and just left there to die. And this man stops and takes care of him. Right? James tells us, in the book of James, it tells us not to show favoritism. If a poor man comes in, don't make him sit on the floor. And if a rich man comes in, don't be like, hey man, here's the best seat in the house for you. Don't show favoritism that way. So the question today is, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? Can I tell you, it's the one who's hurting and left laying on the side of the road. It's the one who may not physically show that that's who they are, but maybe mentally or emotionally or spiritually, they've been beat up and left for dead. They've been destroyed. They have been beat up by all these things and left for dead. That's your neighbor. That's your neighbor. So I titled 
this message, and then I'll preach it all, and now I'll tell you the title. But the question is, who's in my chair? Who's in my chair? Because here's what I want to do tonight for the altar call. I have two parts here. But the main part that I want to do is we, we left the chairs as full as possible in this room, right? This, this would be what I would almost consider max capacity for this small room. Okay, we might be able to squeeze a little bit more if, if, if we had to or something, but this would probably be more of max capacity. Right? We might be able to squeeze another row and a few more chairs here, but ultimately, we're pretty close. And I believe that the Lord can fill all of these chairs. I do. So this is what I want to do tonight. I want you to take ownership of a chair. Right? You guys are all sitting across these first two pews. The pews. The rows of chairs. Used to Sunday morning, I guess. And this is what I want to do for the altars. We're going to put on some music. And I want you to just go pray over a chair. Find an empty chair and I want you to pray over it. And I want you to ask God, who is the neighbor that you are supposed to reach out to? Who is the neighbor who is broken, who is beat up, who has been left for dead, whether it be physically, whether it be emotionally, whether it be mentally, whether it be spiritually. Now, they may put on a good face in front of everybody else, and nobody else may know what's going on, but the Lord may give you an insight into their life for just a moment to say, listen, they're hurting. They're dying on the inside. They need me. And they may go to church, and they, they may not. They may claim to be a Christian, but not go or, or even have any evidence of him in their life and, and to that I say they're probably hurting they're probably beaten up they've probably been left for dead and who is it that you can reach out to we're going to pray over them tonight and I'm going to allow the Lord to just speak to your heart and allow you and this is my challenge once you get their name I want you to write it down I want you to hold on to it I want you to keep it and I want you to pray over them every day I want you to pray that God would move in their life, that God would grab their heart, that, that God would help them and heal them. And then the second thing is I want you to pray that God would give you an opportunity to share about him or invite them to church with you. Because I believe that these chairs can be filled when we begin to pray and ask and invite people to come. Right? And this is not my plea of we need to get more people in here this, I love you guys but I also know that there are souls that God wants to reach out to and this is our this is I don't preach on reaching your friends and all that very often but tonight I am tonight I'm saying who is your neighbor who's in your chair that you can invite and bring to the table that you can bring to this place that you can say listen uh, my youth pastor he doesn't dress very cool, and sometimes he preaches pretty good, but I can tell you one thing about him. He's going to love you. He's going to love you, and he, he doesn't care that you're, you're broken. He doesn't care that you're, you're wounded. He doesn't care that you don't have the best home life. He's going to love you, because I can guarantee you that's true. And so we're going we're gonna to take some time, and we're going to pray tonight.